Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Now this literally came into me today. I haven't even taken the, you, you, you can see right here, I haven't even taken this out of the wrapper yet. Now this is the MSI GeForce RTX 2070 Gaming Z SKU. And this MSRP is for about $600. So this is definitely their priciest, uh, sort of highest option SKU when it comes to RTX 2070s. You've got uh, your Twin Frozer 7, uh, you've got your Twin Frozer 7 cooling on it. You've got Mystic Light Sync on it for the RGB implementation on it. Plus you've got a pretty heavy factory overclock with this thing, clocking in at about 1840 megahertz on the boost clock right out of the box. So like the title for this video specifies, this is more about just unboxing the card and taking a closer look at the heat sink here. I will have a follow-up video on this one where I go over uh, the performance of the card, sound levels, as well as, uh, the, as well as the RGB lighting implementation, assuming that I'm able to effectively control it using MSI specific drivers and software. Because remember, I'm rocking a gigabyte ecosystem for my daily driver rig right now. So without further ado, let's bring it in and through the magic of editing, bring us to a different view. All right, so before I press forward any further, I wanna go ahead and apologize about the audio quality in this video. Uh, this room that I'm in, my kitchen, it's very echoey and frankly, I don't really have a better place to do this right now that has better acoustic qualities. Hopefully I will have fixed some of this in the editing, but I apologize ahead of time. All right, so let's get this box opened up. All right, so now that we're in the box, uh, first thing I'm greeted with is this uh, black MSI folder. Let's see what we got in here. So we're starting with a waste of plastic. Looks like we got a quick install guide as well. This actually appears to be some kind of installation guide for a uh, support bracket of some kind. I'm wondering if that, there is a support bracket in here. We'll take a closer look at that in a sec. Looks like they've also got this uh, Lucky the Dragon Computer Workshop uh, comic comic book in here. Um, I'll probably show some close-up shots shots of this in a in a little bit here, just so you can see what exactly is going on here. But it looks like this sort of uh, cartoony way of sort of explaining how to use your graphics card and how to use the overclocking utility and things like that. Oh my God, they give you coasters. This is probably my favorite accessory that I've ever gotten with a graphics card before because beer is definitely a thing in this household and having coasters on hand is always problematic. So MSI, thank you so much for providing extra coasters with your graphics card. And then it looks right here like they have a quick user's guide in every language ever. All right, now let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this, shall we? My God, this is monstrously heavy. All right, so we'll actually start off with the brace here, uh, weight being mentioned because this is, just to hold this, this is such an exceptionally heavy graphics card. I mean, you would sort of expect that from a two and a half, three slot card, but the fact that they not only supply a brace for the card, but they actually supply a metal brace for the card. That's actually a really thoughtful inclusion. And it's it sort of, this feels more in line with the premium price point that this product uh, is coming with because, I mean, let, let's face it, unless you have a case where at the back of the case you can address uh, you can address the pegs for the for the rear I/O shield for the graphics card, like Jay's done, like Jay's explained how to do in one of his videos. You're not going to be able to compensate for the mammoth sag this card is going to have. So this brace is a really welcome addition. I mean, yes, it's not RGB, it's not anything stupendously fancy, and it has this sort of black, red, and gold uh, gaming uh, or gaming uh, color scheme on it, which is admittedly a little weird, but it, it works. And and it definitely ties in with their um, with their Twin Frozer 7 branding, as we'll see in a second when I take the card out of its wrapper. In the plastic, this card is too big. Oh my God. All right, so here she is out of the box. The MSI GeForce RTX 2070 Gaming Z. This, 
I'm just gonna set that down for a second and sort of set my forearm in front of this thing. This is a gargantuan graphics card. I mean, the, the amount of mass that's in this heat sink is ridiculous. Now on the screen right now, I should have some uh, dimensional information for the card when it's fully assembled, uh, as well as the measurements for the fans on the heat sink on the outside. Now you can see, let me get the camera uh, to take a closer look right here. Now as we can see right here, uh, this section of the rear IO shield right here for this card is where you would normally bolt it into uh, the back of your case. And you can see right here, there's a good inch to inch and a half right here that comes off from this bracket point. So bear this width in mind when you go to, when if you're thinking about buying a card, uh, this specific card actually, uh, to put in your rig, keep this gap in mind because if your case is not wide enough to accommodate this extra girth of the PCB, because that's actually where most of it's coming from is the PCB, then you're not gonna be able to comfortably fit this and you will run into uh, some collision issue issues with the side panel. As for this back plate, Holy crap, that is sexy. I normally don't comment a lot about the back plate of a card as long as it's doing something functional for the product. But I gotta tell you, with the direction I'm personally going with my build right now, this is probably one of the sexiest back plates I think I've ever seen. And the best part about it there's no lighting on the back of it. It's just super clean. And frankly, I'm kind of glad there isn't any lighting here because this heatsink really needs to be allowed to speak for itself. Now for rear IO, we are blessed with an HDMI port, two display ports, a USB 3.1 port type C, and another display port down here. So we have some pretty robust connectivity uh, for this graphics card. Now one thing that you would notice uh, is missing here is NVLink fingers. That's right, this particular card is not NVLink uh, compatible. So if you were uh, if you were planning on running this card in an SLI configuration, it's just it's not going to work. And and actually, I believe most RTX 2070 models are like this, but I could be wrong. I'll leave a little annotation down here if I wind up just, you know, being completely off with that fact. And then we can also see this card requires eight plus six pin power connectivity. But now, through the magic of editing, we have a removed heatsink. So I'm just gonna take a second right here and uh, go ahead and clean off the heatsink itself, clean off the die, and then we'll take a closer look at everything. All right, so now that we have the whole thing disassembled, I'll make a couple of quick comments here. In total, getting this heatsink disassembled with the back plate removed and the mid plate removed from the graphics card takes a total of 14 screws, each of which goes through the back plate into sections of the mid plate and the heatsink. Four screws that go around the cold plate base of the heatsink. This is the, the section here that touches the GPU core. And then two discrete screws in the back of the GPU's IO shroud. Now while the heat sink itself does by and large come off the card pretty easily, I found that the back plate uh, took a little bit of effort to get off and that's largely because as you can see here, this back plate has a functional use. Uh, those are cooling pads that are here uh, where the GPU is and where the, uh, where the back of the uh, VRAM modules are. So you do get some active cooling with this heat sink for your, uh, for your VRAM and for the back of your CPU socket. How much this actually affects things, I would have to test further, but for right now, we can assume that this is in fact a functional back plate. Now the mid plate is also providing some sort of uh, heat spreading for the uh, for the DRAM for the VRAM modules rather than uh, acting as an actual heat sink. This does rest over top of them, sort of like so. And uh, again, it more spreads the heat out over them rather than uh, acting as a as a legitimate heat sink. But the fact that there's a lot of uh, openings and the fins on the heatsink itself here. This is probably fine uh, for your D for your VRAM modules. I keep on wanting to call it DRAM. 
So let's take a quick look at the heat sink itself before we get to the PCB, because this realistically is where most of your weight is coming from with this graphics card. This is an exceptionally beefy cooler, and I would genuinely be shocked if this card had uh, poor operating temperatures uh, at stock or overclock settings. And we can see there isn't any direct contact with the heat pipes for this particular cooler. There is a uh, nickel-plated copper base, at least that's what I believe it is, is nickel-plated copper, uh, that connects to the heat pipes, which then uh, disperses heat throughout the rest of the fins on the, uh, on the heat sink. And we can also see this flat section in the fins right here that's next to these little pads. Uh, this is basically all of your VRM cooling. And as we'll see when we take a closer look at the PCB, basically all of the components that need to be uh, or, or that sh really should be uh, actively cooled for uh, a proper high-end uh, overclocking experience out of the box with a card like this. Uh, everything, everything is being accounted for here. So in general, uh, I really like this heat sink, but I will say that beyond unseating it from your GPU die, you will wanna be mindful of all the little connectors on this thing. There's like four little connectors here. And I imagine, Two of them are for the fans that are included on the heat sink, while the other two are meant for RGB lighting control on the heat sink. It's obviously possible to remove them safely because I was able to do that here, but you will want to be careful when you're removing these connectors, especially the one that's just north of the VRAM dims, and I should uh, have a close-up image of it right here. That particular cable, if you were to try and just rip this heatsink off, you'd probably damage that cable. So I would be really careful either way when you're taking this heatsink off. All right, so now here we can get a better look at the PCB itself. Um, it's a pretty cleanly laid out PCB. I like that they're using uh, the space uh, efficiently and leaving just enough of it there that the PCB itself is likely acting as a form of passive cooling for some of the other components on the PCB that aren't getting actively cooled uh, through direct heatsink contact. There is what appears to be a pretty reasonably powerful VRM for your GPU and your VRAM here. Uh, but again, I will leave guys. I will leave guys like Buildzoid and uh, and Steve Burke to uh, to do more formal analysis on this because again, I'm not 100% uh, familiar uh, with VRM layout designs and the specifics of the components. Though I'm certain some of the weaknesses of this will likely shine through in some of the performance testing I'll follow up with in a later video. And then looking at the back of the card, once again, not a whole lot that's super special or sticks out as being problematic or anything like that. I'm not seeing any uh, dirty soldering points. So there, there doesn't appear to be any components that are physically damaged here. But guys, there you have it. A fully disassembled RTX 2070 from MSI. Once again, this is their Gaming Z model. One quick thing before I, before I leave you guys off here, uh, I do want to point out, this is specifically using the TU106-400A-A1 core. So this is actually the better binned core that is uh, reportedly uh, meant to be uh, not only better bin, but capable of sustaining higher boost clock speeds for a longer period of time. So I'm actually really excited to get this card back together and uh, tune it for you guys and show you all uh, sort of what kind of performance you can expect from this. But anyway, give a thumbs up on the video if you like what you saw. Don't forget to subscribe for more content coming at you hopefully sooner rather than later. Don't forget to follow me on my social media feeds. I should have them uh, down here. How am I moving my finger? There we go, I figured out the finger pointing thing from this angle. <sighs> but until next time, take it easy.